I think it's difficult for a lot of people to understand how my perspective on everything is about national security over my electability. Primarily because I don't think I'm electable anyways. And so um, no matter what happens, my job is national security. Like when I talk about the OSI layer and everyone's going, no, the physical layer is the wire. It's the, it's the cable that, the, that it's like, it's, it's the, it's the binary. And then I'm sitting there going, no, the physical layer is way beyond what you realize in my mind. Um, it's because what layer is the most important you like your, your survival, your, your physical survival. And so when we're talking about security and we're including uh, computer security in the security discussion, what matters the most physical? Why? Because I'd rather have my computer hacked than for me to die because I can replace my computer. I, I, I'm saying this because um, I think a lot of people want me to be the perfect politician, but I'm, I, I've never been a politician. I've been a person that considers himself the cornerstone of like our um, national security. It's, it's hard to explain how, how I, I still believe that. Um, and I think a lot of people don't understand our national security. It's, it's, it's like a cop knowing how to do security, but not understanding national security because the issues are too freaking huge and their biases affect their knowledge of the situation, which brings me to my next point, foreign spies running for president. Well, or agents of foreign powers running for president or agents of, 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 of people that don't have our interest running for president, um, they exist. And um, I know, I understand that a lot of people were bothered by me saying the number one threat to the United States from a national security perspective that's running for president is Pete Buttigieg. The number two threat is Andrew Yang. And then I, I don't know about Buttigieg because uh, I'm not going to start making assumptions, but um, I, I was told Andrew Yang's father was a foreign spy. And I have a feeling that Buttigieg kind of follows that same trend because, like, you, you're a gay guy that went to Harvard that's that smart, but then you want to join the military even though the military says that you have to lie about your existence because back when he was joining the military, he joined during Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So you decide to, like, I mean, your existence involved lying in order to be a part of the military and what, like, what noble cause was the military embarking upon at that point? Well... Um, killing people over poppies and oil. And so, yeah, um, I know, no, we're, we're fighting for democracy for the Iraqis, but what is democracy to the Arabs? Women not being allowed to leave their home. Women being forced to wear niqabs. Women being forced to wear hijabs. Um, like, I mean, honestly, what happens when there's democracy in the Middle East? Hamas wins. That's, that's the truth. And so, like, if you're this, if you're the super smart Harvard guy and you're going, I actually was for democracy. That's why I joined the military. And because I wanted to, it wasn't about killing them. It's about liberating them because I'm not a psychopath because a lot of people want to want to liberate people. I understand you. I understand why you would want to liberate people. You're for democracy. I'm talking about soldiers that I was, I didn't join the military to kill people. I joined the military to liberate people. Okay. I, I, I do understand where you're coming from, but I'm also saying that Pete Buttigieg is a very, very smart man that um, can logically go, okay, what happens when you liberate Arabs? Hamas wins the election. So we end up wanting to thwart elections a lot of the time in the Middle East because who wins? Very religious, devout people. Part of being an elected person in the Middle East, especially, is faking like you're more religious than you are or being so religious that people love you because they admire you because of your religion. And if you don't understand that, but then you're an expert on that region because you're like, because that's why you want to join the military is to fight that fight, fight for these people's freedom. It's like, okay, you're not an expert. And, and, and no matter what you say about me, he has no military experience. He's not an expert. I am an expert. Like I am an expert on security, especially. Um, I mean, I'm not like, as much of an expert in certain ways as a lot of people, but I am an expert. And so all I'm saying is it logically doesn't like, I, I just don't understand why someone would 
throw away their entire life to join the military when you're gay because like is is it throwing away your entire life well for me my love life is what really matters to me like my love life is like everything like everything i do is for my love life i mean the only reason i'm dissatisfied with my life is because my love life so which i mean i guess I, I there are other reasons i should be dissatisfied with my life all i'm saying is i i mean maybe my mindset is different but all i'm saying is when i get told Pete Buttigieg is a national security threat. And I say it, do I want to win an election based on a lie like that? Or do I want to get votes based on a lie like that? No way. Don't want those votes. None. That is not why I say it. That would be, that would piss me off more than any, I would say, I, 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 I take away, take away all my votes. You just proved it to me that he is not an agent of a foreign power. Take away all my votes. I don't want him because do I care about being president? I care about moving on my life. Do I like, I think one thing that a lot of people have realized about me is all I want to do is go edit my book again and then write the second half of my book. And then I, I want to release the, the nonfiction version of it because the fiction version, I screwed up so much trying to make it fiction. And then I want to go and have editors that will tell me, Hey, you can't have two people named Muhammad because Muhammad earlier in this book is too strong of a character and it doesn't make sense. But guess what? Everyone in the Middle East is named Muhammad. They're all named freaking Muhammad. And that's why when it comes for election, oh, who are you going to vote for? Vote for Muhammad. Vote for the most religious guy possible. So um, I was fighting for democracy. I understand where you're coming from. You don't understand what democracy is. You don't understand the problem of democracy. The problem of democracy is that these people don't even understand their basics. Like they don't understand the basics of how their country survives. And then the people that get put in are all kind of scrambling like trying, oh gosh, I'm still trying to figure out how to deal with all the poop. There's too much poop. Everyone poops. And and even in the in the United States, it's it's everyone's trying to figure out. Like, I mean, you have a lot of cities that spend a lot of time dealing with poop. Because the sewer systems and stuff. There's a lot of poop. All I'm saying is, uh, there's no way they're lying to me about that. I, I, I would be shocked. And some people run for president having like been a mayor and then now you get very 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 security very like big security briefings and it's like oh gosh but then like like i said before the guy i hung out with from the secret service the other day like what like two weeks ago i hung out with him he's from harvard he he his best friend is in charge of secret service cyber security and um he was on trump's security detail and um he told me that no one has Secret Service details on them yet. But I don't know. He, I think Joe Biden was a... Well, Joe Biden refuses it. Uh, I can't imagine Pete Buttigieg has it now. But I don't think having Secret Service is the same as getting security briefings. So, um, all, I, I am concerned about what national security information has been given to some of the candidates. But hopefully, it hasn't been that much. Because... I think I'm the only person in the world that realizes, okay, there's there's this TV show called The Rise of Empires, the Ottomans, and it's about the Ottoman Empire who were Muslims. And um, this guy, uh, Sultan Mahmed, Mahmed um, decided that he's going to go co conquer Rome, Constantinople. Constantinople, super rich, super powerful. No one could ever penetrate the walls because straight up, like when you look at their, their walls, you're like, dude, that is a freaking Roman wall. That is like a brilliant wall that they had around they, they, their, their defenses in Constantinople were freaking awesome and that's why no one could break them but then next thing you know turns out they could and all the Christians were going oh god god god's gonna take care of us all the Christians lost to the Muslims the Muslims conquered them and it's because the Muslims had superior numbers more than anything but it's also because the Muslims had cannons that were actually given to them by the Christians and all I'm saying is the history of the world is God's going to save me. Wait, God didn't save me. And that's why we have to be realists. And that's why no matter what you think about this guy, I'm a realist from a national security perspective. And I'm a realist from my own country's security perspective. And that's why I understand the importance of air defenses and defenses of, of the coastlines in the United States. And I, I do understand the importance of our alliances. And I do understand that like, um, like defending Canada's borders especially maritime borders, is defending our borders. But then we also have to pay attention to people coming into our country. 
because it, let's face it, I am from Texas and have we caught um, terrorists that came in through the Mexican border? Yes. How do I know? Because I, a guy from the FBI talked to me about it a long time ago. He said, I think they were Pakistanis or something. Um, so we have to defend our borders. Like uh, our borders are crucial, but, um, but at the same time, like I mean, we have to pay attention to security of things that matter. And this whole idea, we got everyone running for president on all take away guns, all take away guns. It's like, all right, dude, I'll recommend the Smith and Wesson shield. And I'll tell you that is a freaking good gun. And I'm, I feel like that company is way underrated, but you know what other gun I, I've, I've been noticing lately? The Ruger, what is it? Uh, Ruger security. Is that what it's called? I, I kind of like the way it looked. I mean, but I, I mean, I, I was kind of disappointed that these people said it didn't look that good. I thought it was the most attractive gun for sale, like in the, in the small gun market. Anyway, I don't, I, I shouldn't be for guns because I'm running for politics, but I should be for guns because I am for security. And I think that the presence of those guns and more than anything, the presence of that ammo that we save, because you go to the range, the range saves your ammo and they say, or they save the cartridges. That's smart. So, um, I don't know. All I'm saying is that's who I really am more than anything. I am a security guy.